Hi there, and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. It's a second Wednesday, so we're talking daisies and brownies, and specifically, a great start to a great year. So, how exciting, you know, those commercials, the uh, Staples commercials with the, the dad skipping through the aisles singing, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I totally get that commercial on a different level because um, I was never happy to see my kids go back to school. I, <laughs> I like spending my time with them, but I love putting together my office supplies, my pencils and pens and calendars and all that kind of stuff at the beginning of, uh, of the new year and making plans for all the great things that are to come. So this is a terrific time of year for Girl Scouts in my mind because it's when all of the troops are just getting started back up and things are looking good. So I wanted to share with you some of the tools that we have available um, and um, some of the things that you'll be able to use um, or maybe just use as a starting point. I have a little bit of concern about that beeping. So um, hopefully it's all going well. Um, just a little disclosure, full disclosure, this is the second recording of this webinar because the first one I had the wrong monitor up, but I think that we're all set this time. So let us continue. Um, the first set of tools that I wanted to share with you are these quick start guides. Uh, we have a quick start guide for daisies and for brownies, and they're easily found if you go to our website. So let me just roll this over here. Here is my very full window and um, Girl Scouts the main website if you go to forms and resources go click on resources and um, you see all of these nifty things all these nifty resources that you have including down here toward the bottom first four meetings and it gives these outlines that are four page PDFs in fact, I've already got them pulled up over here. Um, they're four-page PDFs that give you samples of the first four meetings you might have. Now, being a bit of a control freak, as I am, I would use these um, to give me a couple of ideas as I, I generated my own outline. But um, if you aren't coming with that kind of a base or that kind of control, issue, then you might use these, again, as an outline, not as a, we're going to do this um, word by word, because that'll be boring for you and for the girls, but it, it gives you an outline to start from. Um, I even kind of like that they've pre-selected a journey to start working with, because at the beginning of the year, especially if it's a brand new troop, you're not going to know what the girls are necessarily interested in right away, but if you start with one of the journeys, then you're going to find the, what the girls are interested in, how they want to take that journey, and then for the next journey, they'll be much more involved in selecting it. So you see there's the one for the daisies, there's one for the brownies. I'm actually going to close out of these so I know what I'm working with. And, um, and they give you ideas. Use it as an outline, as a guide, not as a rock-solid script. And then... Um, once you once you're with the girls you're gonna have the girls actually generate more information um, and more plans for the meeting so that it's not just stuff you've planned um, which is hard that's for me that's always the hardest part about being a, a troop volunteer <laughs> so you have some spiffy tools to help you though including just the, that knowledge. You want to take some time to prepare. Give yourself some time for you, for your, your co-leaders, your leadership team, to get together and talk about what do we want out of this year and what are things that we want to go into this first meeting with. Um, and maybe you're looking over the first four meeting examples or maybe um, the girls had indicated that they had a particular journey in mind or some badges that they were interested in working in, working on this year when you last met. And so put together that outline so you go into the meeting with some kind of an activity pre-prepared, uh, you know, something that the girls can do with their hands and a plan to talk about um, some general ideas of what about what the girls want to do and then ask them, what do you want to do? But you want to have these first two steps before you go to the ask because if you just ask, you might get the vultures and the jungle book, you know, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Um, boring, blah. 
Instead, if you have an activity prepared and you have a general outline, the girls may say, yuck, or they may say, yeah, that's great, or how about if we do it this way? So those are kind of neat. You also want to have um, some tools in your back pocket. And this particular tool, the six parts of a meeting template here, is one of my very favorite tools of all time because it it allows me, it allows any grown-up, but it allows almost any girl to really take some leadership in how to plan the meeting. It might be a piece of paper that you pass around to each of the girls. Now, first and kindergarten and first grade daisies are probably not going to have the literacy level to be able to do a lot with this just on their own. Um, but maybe one of the volunteers goes to the girls and says, hey, you wanted to do the startup activity. What do you want to do? And what kind of supplies are we going to need? Um, by the time the girls are brownies, though, they would be able to take parts of the meeting, not the whole meeting, but parts of the meeting. And things like the opening, the cleanup, and the closing, those are the same at every meeting. So think about it. After Daisy's been to three meetings, she knows what the opening is like. She knows what the cleanup is like, and she knows what the closing is like. So she could take the lead in any one of those sections. That's cool. Um, by the time um, one troop I worked with, I started working with them when they were cadets, I handed them this. They planned the whole meetings. You know, each one would take her section that she was going to take leadership in. And it, it was absolute piece of cake for those 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. I think that it, it's not out of reach for 4th and 5th graders. And I really think that um, certainly with the support of caring adults like yourself, daisies and brownies can manage this. Another tool that's similar but a little different is a caper chart. And this is one example of a caper chart where you would use clothespins or paper clips with uh, ribbons that have the girls' names on it or something to attach to each of the different sections. And this one has six sections. If you had a troop of 12 girls, you'd either want two girls on each of these sections or you'd want to have 12 sections. But each the, the girl whose name is attached to each one would be the one who would take the lead in that. So... That's one example, and another example that's a little more traditional is this caper chart. Um, and again, if you have just six girls, this will this will do. But if you have 12 girls, you'll want to add some more jobs, including possibly the job of sitting on the right side of Miss Angela and the left side of Miss Angela, or the right side of Miss Tammy and the left side of Miss Tammy, so that. Everybody knows what she's supposed to do during the meeting because everybody feels safer when they know what they're supposed to do. Think about when you go to a party. Don't you feel safer if you've got um, something in your hand and you know a couple people that you can go talk to um, or you know the rhythm? Or if you go to a new meeting, you like to know where you're supposed to sit, if you're supposed to have a pen, if you're supposed to, um, if there are papers you're supposed to have. It's always nice when you get an agenda kind of thing. Well, same for kids. Kids like to know where they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do um, and how they can help. And isn't that what the caper chart is, an opportunity for them to help? You'll also want to hold a parents meeting right here at the beginning of the year, um, you know, starting things off with a, a, with a bang, with a, a really great start. And get the parents to come on in, sit down, introduce themselves to each other, um, introduce yourself to them again, maybe. Um, and maybe you know them all well, but still giving them a little bit of, hey, we're starting a new year, and here's some of the ideas that girls have come up with. Here's some of their plans, and they're very excited. And then while you have them there, give them the annual permission form and the health history form for them to fill out. So, again, I'm going to pull up the website here so I can show you how to get to those. Um, because they're super helpful. On the forms page, click on forms and go to health and safety, annual permission form, and the health record. And I already have them pulled up. I believe they're this. Nope, I lied. They're not that either. I'm going to click away some things because I want to know where I am. Okay. So here's the annual permission form. Um, needs to be filled out. Um, it's a writable PDF, so you could email it to them ahead of time and they could fill it out all electronically, except for the signature here. And they may put in their electronic sig signature. You need them to write their name by hand um, on this form. So if they bring it all in all filled out, thank them, and then hand them a pen and say, you know, we need you to fill it in on top of it, please, so that they'll 
they'll sign it. And the health record, um, the health history form here, also a fillable PDF. So if you've got parents who are tech savvy, uh, tech savvy um, and like having their forms filled out that way, send them to them before the meeting so that they can complete them and bring them in. Um, just make sure they know that it needs to be filled out by hand. Or the signature, I'm sorry, the signature needs to be filled out by hand. Now, when you're at that parents' meeting, you might also want to have some volunteer applications and adult membership applications and even girl membership applications um, for people who haven't registered or for those adults who are interested in helping um, but, you know, aren't really sure how much and, you know, great. If they're planning on being at more than three meetings or spending the night with the girls at a sleepover, then we need to have them do a volunteer application so that they can get approved. And we would like them to be uh, registered members, too, so that they're covered by the insurance. So have some of those ready because you never know when somebody's going to be willing to volunteer. Um, another thing that might draw them in is this family star patch. And the Family Star program is a terrific program for getting parents and um, other family members to be supportive of the troop. And this form is actually available on the website. Let me just show you how to get to it. It's not on the forms page because it's a patch program. So if you go to the Activities tab, and go down to Patches, and click on that, you'll see it's right there. And then you click See More, and you get this paper here that um, on the front side it explains a little bit about it and it's, it's telling you as the troop leader how much it's going to cost the troop um, to pay for because it is a, a troop recognition. And then on the back it has the different things that family members could do to help their girl earn the family star, the shining star patch. And so if a family member does any one of these starred sections, she's earned the family star patch. They've earned the family star patch for their, their girl. But down here, if they do four of these or any of these four times, um, then they've earned the shining star for their daughter or their granddaughter or their niece or their um, nice little neighbor kid. So however <laughs> however they're related, um, their, their child that they have guardianship of, however they're related is what's important is that a grown-up has stepped up for this child to help with the troop and these jobs here are things that you might use to recruit some support from those other adults to support your troop this is the time when you want to remind parents that um, their daughter is involved in a, just a terrific opportunity when she's involved in Girl Scouts and they reinforce how valuable that is when they help out with things even if they're helping out with things is at working at one cookie booth or it's driving for one um, field trip or it's coming in with the snack once a month or whatever the job is that's helpful to you and another place that you might find um, some helpful jobs is on this form that comes from ABC Cookies, which is really funny. This this um, abcsmartcookies.com is a support website by the ABC Bakers um, that we use at cookie selling time. But this one particular tool I like so much that I would love to see troops modify it to help with their um, their own troops and it's the volunteer recruitment form if you click on that you're going to get this and see this is a letter that somebody drafted to ABC cookies for you to use during the cookie season to get parents to support their daughters and granddaughters and nieces and whoever um, to become future business women but you could modify it so that it's helping that the, the adults realize that they're helping their girls become leaders and become um, women of courage, confidence, and character who are going to make the world a better place. And so these were some of the jobs that they came up with for this letter to support during the booth sale, or the cookie sale. But using the, the Shining Star Patch requirements and just your own troops plan, you might come up with 
a whole bunch of jobs that parents could do. And they wouldn't have to do all of them, but they would sign up for one or two to help with the troop because many hands make light work. And that's true for Girl Scouts, just like it is for unloading cookies on delivery day and just like it is for building a barn. So um, those are some different resources that you have. Again, that's at abcsmartcookies.com, abcsmartcookies.com. And the volunteer, it's under tools and resources. I'm sorry, it's under the volunteers tab. Then it's under tools and resources. And then it's the volunteer recruitment form. And this is just a terrific website. When you get closer to cookie time, you're, you're going to love it. Okay, so I told you about the shining star. Click out of there. I told you about the annual permission form, the health history form, the volunteer application, um, the membership and membership. And here we are back at Girl Scouts of Maine. Uh, take advantage of this beginning of the year time. It's always fun to uh, have a, a strong start, a big start. And so take advantage of this time with your, your girls and with your parents. Uh, remember to think progression. We want to meet people where they are and take them where they want to go. And so sometimes people surprise us by being far advanced from where we are. And sometimes people surprise us not being as far as we think they are. Um, we need to let go of some of our surprise and meet them where they are and help them along the way. And at the end of every meeting, and it's really part of that progression thing, at the end of your meeting, give your troop, your team, and yourself three minutes, just a little bit of time to make note of three things that went really well at the meeting and something you want to try differently next time. Three things that went really well at the meeting and some, something that you want to try differently next time because it's we're all growing, we're all learning, we're all continuing to improve. And if we give it that little bit of conscious attention, that three minutes, three things that went really well, something we want to try differently next time we're going to be able to see that growth and it's satisfying it's satisfying for all of us for our girls and for us grown-ups so thank you thank you thank you for joining in today and for doing what you do and please if you have a question if you have um, thoughts ideas brilliance um, or frustration whatever give a call or shoot me an email or log into the Wednesday webinar next week, post it on Facebook on the GSME Volunteer Swap, let me know, or let one of your local service team members know, or your membership manager know, and we are here to help, and that's that's what we're here for. So let's take advantage of being part of a big sisterhood. Let's work together to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.